maximizing your retreat profitability is one of the most crucial aspects that quite often get neglected by retreat leaders. And I am on a mission to change that. Why would you want to do a retreat if this is not going to be something that, of course, is going to change people's life, it's going to change yours, it's going to transform your students, but also it's going to be a profitable venture for you. It has happened to me that I have seen again and again retreat leaders that out of the passion and out of the love for what they do, they run a retreat with everything that it involves, planning, organizing, pricing, doing all of the marketing and so on. And then eventually they will not get enough profit to cover all of those hours. And I like to dive in with one story which I have seen uh, often, which is the, it's the, the story of a yoga teacher or a wellness partner who organizes a retreat. And so this is super exciting, right? Because this is about taking your community, taking your clients somewhere else, Sometimes we could do, uh, we could organize that retreat internationally. And then the retreat leader starts to organize and they try to do their best, finding the pricing, the right price point for the retreat, not to talk about all of the marketing, the selling. And while they are doing all of this, there is one aspect that usually gets neglected. And it's the fact of, looking for a price or working on a price that it's going to make this venture profitable. I'm going to help you understand how it works when you want to organize a retreat, what are the crucial aspects you need to look up before even jumping into this venture. This retreat leader who was asked by their community to organize a retreat they really put their effort doing all of this work that a retreat involves, which of course is a lot. It's, uh, it's, it's you know, like chatting with the venue, um, taking care of the deposits, uh, understanding the number of rooms, all of these things, right? Their retreat leader ends, ends up doing the retreat. The retreat tends to be an amazing experience for them. And in the best case scenario, the retreat can also be a transformative experience for the participants and possibly a profitable venture for the retreat venue. That's the hotel or the retreat location. However, when the retreat leader who was asked to do this retreat and who ran this retreat when they start crunching the numbers and when they start looking at the numbers, how much uh, you know they are making with this retreat after taking off all of the expenses, when the retreat leader finishes this retreat, they realize that actually, if they count in all of the hours and all of the work, it was just too much <laughs> it was not worth it to do this retreat and there is no way that they're gonna do this again i have seen this and of course i have also seen and experienced the opposite which is being well paid for your work what most of the time happens because we as, as retreat leaders we really really care about our clients what usually happens is that our clients get to have an amazing experience and soon they're going to start asking again for the same experience. And so that retreat leader that at the beginning felt like, you know, it was not worth the headache. It was just like so much work to do. Not worth it. I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> they probably would end up running the retreat again. And again, we do this because we are, People with heart, we are heart-centered entrepreneurs. We want to serve our clients at the best. They ask for their retreat. 
basically we don't know how to price we don't know how to find a profitable way to price our retreat and we end up doing it. and this must stop so let's dive in and let's talk about the five questions that you should be asking yourself before even thinking about organizing a retreat and the first question would be how much money do i want to make out of this venture and yes this is a question that you should ask yourself because after all you are the person who is organizing the retreat you are the retreat leader and you should be the one who decides how much you should do next question you should ask yourself is what is the minimum number of retreat attendees you can take and again super important here to understand that when you price a retreat you need to keep in mind what's the minimum number of people that you're gonna be able to run this retreat you're gonna know what's the number so this is something that you need to decide in advance the next question would be am i comfortable and capable of handling all the logistics and operational aspects of the retreat beyond the teaching or should i hire someone else to take care of this this is super important running a retreat is not just the teaching there are so many other things involved so you should ask yourself am i gonna be able to run all of those logistics or do i need someone else and if you do need someone else bear in mind that that is going to involve extra costs okay i hope you get me i hope you're still here with me and let me know if those questions make sense and if they don't make sense uh, please let me know in the comments i'm always happy to chat with you something it's not making sense right now next question would be is this is it better to lead this retreat on my own as a retreat leader or do i want to hire or collaborate another retreat leader do we want to hire another yoga teacher another wellness um, expert or do i want to collaborate with other retreat leader and if the and if the answer to that question is yes i want to hire someone to teach the classes in my retreat or i want to collaborate i want to partner with someone to teach this retreat then you need to understand that that it's gonna change the final price of your retreat because it's not one person being paid anymore in this case your case but it's two people it's two retreat leaders that needs to be paid and so that means the price will be affected and finally the final question do i currently have some clients or do i have a community of potential clients that i can market my retreat to there are so many uh, retreat leaders that rely on marketing websites like book yoga retreats or uh, there are other uh, retreat leaders that rely on the retreat venue website and this is not now you should have or what i would recommend is that for you to have some clients already or some people in your community to who you could market your retreat let's dive in into the five steps uh, that you need to have in place in order to have a profit after all of that work that you have done and the first point the first thing you should be very aware it's uh, you need to understand all of the costs involved in your retreat and here is where many retreats um, um, have a mistake make the mistake is that they don't count of the on the expenses they do get to do put a price uh intuitively which uh i don't think 
it's uh, I don't think this is something strategic. Many retreat leaders get to put a price guided by their intuition. And actually, they don't, when they calculate the price or when they get out, uh, come out with this price, they don't calculate all of the costs involved in the retreat. As I mentioned before, trip to the venue, your food, your accommodation, and even marketing. If you're, gonna, if you're planning to do some marketing for your retreat, I always recommend also to include all of those expenses as well. So super mindful, your expenses should be there. Please, they cannot, they cannot be, a, you know, this, this price cannot be uh, calculated without taking into consideration your expenses. Second important point is to price your retreat considering all of the costs involved, this previous point that I just talked about, and also your profit. Yes, yes, yes. You hear that correctly. You want to include the price for your work. And that might be the work that you do when you are in the retreat, all of the transformative work that you're doing, sharing your teaching and so on, but also all of the hours that takes all of the organization and stuff. And this is critical. Now, one of the biggest questions that I get from other retreat leaders when I'm working with them, some of my clients, when we reach to this point, they are like, okay, Manu, but how much should I charge? You know, I don't know. I don't have any idea of how much should I charge. And then what I always recommend is to understand, first of all, how much is your price per hour? And uh, but also something really, really important that I that I help my my clients to work with, it's to it's to understand the cost and the value of this retreat. And usually my my reply when they ask me how much should I charge, I tend to answer them, it's really, really up to you. It's really up to your ability to solve your ideal student or client problems it's also up to your understanding of your client's problems dimension that means your understanding of how big this well-being problem your client has how big is in their life Remember, your client has come to your retreat because they are trying to fix a well-being problem and they believe you are the person that it's going to help them. And finally, another important point to, to consider when you are asking yourself how much you should charge is your capacity and your capability to showcase the value of your retreat in your marketing material yes that's for sure okay marketing it's point it's it's a critical point and if you are offering a high value product and high value service uh, which normally a retreat tends to be you really need to be able to showcase that in your marketing Having said that, I usually, when I run retreats or when I work with other retreat leaders that are organizing a retreats, I usually aim and advise my retreat leaders to aim for seven to eight thousand, uh, sorry, seven to ten thousand euro. And that's the profit. That would be the profit for a minimum number of people. Let's say if your if your minimum number of people is four people, the minimum number of profit that you should be making, I would recommend to be from seven thousand to ten thousand euro, and that's profit. That's after all of the expenses are gone, are finished. And uh, finally. I'm going to dive in into the last three points. Uh, we're going to go a little bit quicker for these three points because um, for the third point, it's about managing your retreats deposit. 
And I don't want to spend a lot of time in this point because I'm going to leave links in the description of this video. Or if you are reading my blog, you're going to have a link to a, an Instagram live that I did a few weeks ago. And you can click in that link and understand how to manage your retreat deposit. But the only thing I'm going to say is that remember when you book a venue, when you run a retreat and book the venue, what's going to happen is that the venue is going to ask you for a non-refundable deposit. So you want to minimize the risk to lose that deposit. That deposit can be lost if no one books your retreat or if the minimum number of people who were supposed to book your retreat, you don't reach the number. Okay. So please, in order to get more understanding of that previous point, just check the link below in the description of this video or just check my blog and you will understand that. Finally, the last two points we have, one of them is up leveling your marketing and your landing page. Yes, yes, yes. Marketing is a crucial aspect of a retreat and you should be able to create a landing page with all of the necessary elements in there, including the cancellation policy, including amazing photos, including details about the venue, the benefits of your retreat, who is this retreat for, and yes, you need to have a buy now button so that people can purchase or at least they can pay your deposit. And finally, the final point that I want to share with you today is to consolidate your numbers after the retreat. That means once you're finished the retreat, um, of course, you will have all of the numbers right before the retreat. But once the retreat is finished, you also want to make sure that the numbers that you have at the beginning match the numbers that you have at the end so that that the plan matches the reality that's what i would like you to do if you need to have more guidance please go ahead and check my blog uh linked in the description of this video all of this information that i share with you today it's there written you can take notes you can understand if you want to know how you and i can work together on your project on your retreat just send me a message. You can find me at uh, yogabizmentor.com. You can find me in my social media, and we can talk about your project. All right, that's all for today. This is all that I wanted to share. I hope this was helpful. If you stay here until the end, please let me know in the comments that this is something that was helpful for you. Super happy to get back to you if you have any questions. So thank you so much, and that's all for today. Bye-bye. Maximize shit. Oops. <laughs> Ha, <laughs>